Hello, right, okay, so this is going to be um, a video that just brings together um, the animation bits and pieces that uh, a few of us looked at last week uh, as we went through and started bringing together a, a third person model uh, and then uh, controller and animations that go along with that. So um, some of this will be familiar to a few of you, but if you need it to go back over things, then you've got it there. Uh, and if you haven't done it, then it's kind of a walkthrough of what we did uh, in lesson, and then uh, the completion of that as well. So there'll be a bit in here for everyone. Right, so I will apologise because it's been a while since I've done this, so I'll be a little bit out of practice um, from COVID times, but uh, we shall... Uh, push on through, I'm sure. Right, first things first, we are going to use a little website called Mixmo. Uh, apologies if I look off camera too often, um, it's because I've got a second screen which has got everything on that I run uh, with the um, uh, recording stuff on, the, uh, on my other screen, so apologies. Um, right, uh, Mixamo is an Adobe um, site that we can use. Unfortunately, it doesn't let us use our um, login details from college, so you need to set up your own Apple, um, not Apple, your own Adobe ID. Uh, now this is free, um, it's not a charge or anything, it just needs to be um, not the college email, it kind of doesn't like it if you use it. So you can do that through Mixamo, just click on there and you'll be able to see that there's a sign in option, you can't download anything until you sign in and then you can create your Adobe ID then uh, as you go through. Uh, like I say, it's all nice free, you might already have one, um, uh, a few of you did uh, when we were in lesson, when we were looking at it. But then just search for Mixamo, M-I-X-A-M-O uh, and then go to the site and it will look a little bit like this if I click on the right screen there we go all right um, so what we are going to look at are the models and uh, within these character within these character settings um, and then we're going to look at a few animations now what I need you to do is choose a, a model that's as humanoid as possible um, Okay, so don't go anything that's too crazy like this guy or anything that's too oversized like Mousy here, uh, but find something that is generally humanoid in shape. I'm going to use this character here um, that um, I've used on a few other things, so I know it works. I know the animations kind of work quite nicely with it, um, but choose one of these that are fairly well kind of humanoid and, and not kind of too um, too out there just while we're kind of doing this practice. So you can swap out and you can play around with the other models as you go. Um, what I would say is that Mixamo also lets you rig your own models. So eventually you'll be able to kind of design something in Blender, um, get it into a T-pose, uh, and you can do a fairly basic, but uh, a fairly effective kind of rig uh, within this site, uh, and then kind of apply the animations that we're going to look at next uh, as well. All right, so once you've chosen your model, you'll see it previewing on the right-hand side, um, uh, and then we can start thinking about download. So first of all, hit download. And we need to make sure that it is selected for FBX for Unity. You'll see that there's a few options as you go through, but FBX for Unity, uh, and then make sure we leave it in the T pose, and then hit download. Okay, I'm not going to download mine because you might see down the bottom here I've already got mine downloaded. All right, but hit download uh, and just have that in your downloads folder, um, uh, safe and ready to copy into Unity in a bit. And then we can start looking at the animations. Now we are going to need four animations in total. We don't need any more than that. Um, so when you select on the animations, you'll see that you'll have a whole load come up um, that kind of are all kind of random different uh, positions from kind of attack animations to dancing animations to anything and everything. All right. Um, we're going to look at the basic ones that do not have kind of models or um, kind of skins apply to them if you like so we're going to look at these um, kind of blue and red mannequins the blue ones attribute to uh, a more kind of male uh, focused animation on this site uh, and the red ones for female ones but you can mix and match uh, as much as you like um, doesn't really matter for the basic ones that we're going to look at so um, uh, it will be fine so four animations that we need uh, and we only need four you can go back and play around with the other animations later on once you've got the basics sorted but we need an idle we need a walk, we need a run, and we need a jump. Those are the four that we need. So an honor, idle, a walk, a run, and a jump. Okay, so to do that, you can type in search, hit enter, and we'll get some coming up. So I'm just gonna scroll down. There's one I know works all right, which I think is that one. Not much movement there. I might just choose that one so that we've got a little bit more movement and you can see it. 
There we go. Oh, she's listing a bit, but you could just see a little bit of arm movement, a little bit of shoulder. There we go. A little bit of kind of kind of moving back and forth. So it's a bit more different. All right. So in the same way, download. Make sure we're in FBX for Unity again. This time without skin. We don't need the skin because we're going to attribute the animation to the uh, to the model that we've downloaded already. Okay, and it just saves on kind of memory size and file space and, and everything like that, uh, and just kind of makes things less um, complicated later on. All right, so just make sure this time without skin and download, and you'll get the model with the um, animation. You can see just probably just about you can see where I've downloaded these before that when you get it through as an animation, you've got this little ampersand at and then the name of the animation. So there's my at idol animation that I've downloaded already. All right. Let's have a look at walking. So again, into search. Let's just type in walk. And then, nice, simple, nice, basic. Now you'll see that some of these animations have an animation start point and then they walk off the screen. Now we don't want that. We want to make sure that our animation is in place and it's walking on the spot, effectively, uh, because we're going to have all of the controls of movement within our script and we're going to move around our space in Unity in the game engine rather than any animation doing that for us. So you just need to make sure you see you've got this option here where it says in place. If you check that, then the animation will change and it's just walking on the spot. Okay, so that's what we want for walking and for running. So just make sure, please, that you've got that uh, selected. Um, what I would say is that you've got different options here that you can play around with um, on these little um, slider bars that you can have a quick look at. You don't need to, but you can have a little play around and have a look at those if you want to. Um, and it will tweak the animation and you'll get a preview of it in here. Again, download FBX for Unity without skin and hit download so that you've got that one. So do the same for running. Make sure that that's in place uh, as well. I'm going to jump straight to, um, no pun intended, sorry, uh, straight to jump. Now with these ones, just be wary because the jump animations have a few different things that go on with them. So if we have a little look at this one, for instance, you'll see that it's a jump back effectively. Now, again, we don't want that movement at the moment. We want to keep it nice and simple. And even if we jump, if we put this in place, it looks a bit odd because she's jumping backwards, but she's not moving backwards. So you just need to be a bit wary with what animation you call for the jumping. So I'm going to find one that's quite simple. I think this one might be OK. It's not too bad. Oh, I might go that one. That's a bit more standard. All right. The other thing with the jump animations is that they take a bit longer because we're not kind of um, kind of moving around and we're not kind of looping these because they're, they'll happen once and then we land again. Um, uh, they take a little bit longer, but we'll play around with that later when we come into it. So this one will be fine. So just keep it nice and simple when you're choosing your jump animation. Again, download without skin. Hit download uh, and have that ready to move into Unity. OK, so you should have your four animations, idle, walk, running and jump. Uh, and obviously your main model that you downloaded at the start. So five things to bring across uh, into Unity. All right. We'll come back to Mixamo as we go through uh, the uh, next few weeks and, and the year. Um, but for now, that's where we can leave Mixamo. Uh, and we need to uh, fire up Unity. And I'm going to go, I'm on the wrong scene, there we go. I'm just going to go into Unity. Now, what I've done here is just in a build that I've been kind of playing around with before. Um, I've just got a very simple setup. Okay, so I've got um, a plane that I've expanded out a bit, so it's quite large. Um, and all I've done different to that um, is just make a new folder um, that's called third person that's going to hold, hold all of my information that I'm going to bring across in a minute. Okay, so I've just called it third person models, and we're going to keep it all nice and neat in one folder for this little kind of video. So we need to find our models. So there's all my downloads. So the one without anything after it is my main model, and then we've got at idle, at walking, at running, and at jumping. So I'm just going to drag and drop all of those into that folder and that shouldn't take too long. I should just do things, let's just minimize that, and get it out of the way. And then your folder should look a little bit like this. So we've got our main model in T pose. We've got our animations for idle, walk, run and jump that look a little bit like prefabs, um, which we'll come, uh, come on to in a minute. All right, so first things first, we need to set these up so that they're ready for us to use. So with your 
model selected, just select it once. And then up here in Inspector, you'll see that we've got some different options, model, rig, animation materials. And you've looked at these before when we brought models in, where we've gone to model and looked at um, generating colliders and bits and pieces, I'm sure. All right. We need to go to rig because we need to create an avatar for this and we can create it from all of the information that we've got already. So under avatar definition, we want to change this to create from this model and then hit apply. And then what should happen when you expand out your little model like that, then you will see that you've now got this avatar icon uh, sitting in there and Unity has done the work for us to get that into place. Uh, okay, it's also going to add um, a component to our model as well, which we'll come on to in a little bit. All right, so just make sure select once on your model in the um, uh, project window, and then under inspector, go to rig, make sure it's on generic, and we are creating from this model under avatar definition, and then hit apply, and then we should get that avatar there ready for us. Right, the next thing I want you to do is make sure you can open up your animations and this little triangle uh, icon is the actual animation itself. So what I tend to do is just duplicate these out so that um, I've got the originals nice and safe. And if I make a mistake or anything like that, then I've got them uh, ready to go back to if I need them. So just select once and control D to duplicate and you'll see that you get a duplication of that um, just outside of the prefab. So I'm gonna do that for each of my animations just so that I've got them all nice and organized neatly in my folder. There we go. And with most of these, what we're going to set them up as is um, an animation that will loop because we want them to continuously play that animation uh, until the script that we're going to add to this um, tells it not to. All right, so what we're going to do with walking, we're going to select it once and then in the inspector, we're going to under loop time, just check that box so that we loop that animation. I'm going to do the same for running and the same for idle. Now jump, I'm going to leave because jump will play that animation once and then it will land and it should, once we get everything set up, um, go back into the idle animation. So we don't need to have that um, looping. We're going to play around with that in a slightly different way. So we can leave jumping as is. So that's pretty much all that we need ready to go um, before we start actually getting our model in. So let's get something in our hierarchy. So there's our model. I'm just going to drag it into place. Let's zoom in. Now one thing I am going to do is I'm just going to make sure she's just off the ground a little bit so I don't fall, in, fall through the floor during this um, uh, video uh, and make myself look stupid. I do that often enough anyway. Right, so let's get our camera set up first. So there's our model. It will have a few things in there, the main model itself, uh, a few little bits of information from Mixamo in, uh, in terms of the rigging, uh, but nothing else. Now you will have a main camera. I made a mistake earlier and uh, I just had to restart this scene, which is why I don't have one. So I'm just going to drop a camera in myself. I'm just going to tag it as the main camera, otherwise I might have problems later. But with your camera, with your main camera, just drag and drop so it is then a child of your object because we want this camera following us similar to how we've done the first person controller but this time we're going to have the camera set back a little bit so that we can see those animations playing nicely so we need to do exactly the same as we've done before select on the camera and zero out the position value so wherever your camera is just zero those out and you'll see that your camera will go to the middle and to the feet of your model and then using the move tool we're going to move it back and you can see just in my preview down here I'm right at her feet now. Let's come up a bit. Now I'm going to come back a little bit more so that we can see those animations. I'm going to shift mine just so it's off center a little bit. And that'll do us. That'll position our camera quite nicely. So you'll see from kind of different examples that you've played and that you've seen um, that a lot of the time the camera is off center. It's not kind of smack bang behind um, the third person model that we're we're looking at. Um, so you can position yours wherever you want to, um, but somewhere along those lines. So click on the parent of your model in your hierarchy. In fact, I'm going to close that arrow down so I don't select on anything that I shouldn't do. I'm just going to tag this as player 
because we're going to use the same script that we used for our first person controller so we know that player is an important uh, element of that in terms of the tagging later on I'm just going to do that now while I remember it and you'll see that on our model we've got that animator component that I mentioned before where we rigged our um, model and we set that up and we applied it it's added that component in ready for us already and you can even see our little avatar element um, is pre-populated for us all right so it's starting to do some of the work for us we want to add a few more components so the first one is going to be a rigid body so that our player has a bit of mass and under interpolate can you change this please to extrapolate and under constraints can you please freeze the rotation on the x y and z axes um, that way we won't fall over when we use our script later uh, and that's very similar to what we've done with our first person controller so um, hopefully nothing too new there and just setting this up ready for later I'm going to add in a capsule collider as well just because I'm fairly certain that we will use this later on um, in the next few weeks or throughout the year um, we won't do much with that in this instance but we'll just put, stick it on there now while we think of it and then we're pretty much ready to go. Um, what we need to do next is add in our script uh, that we're going to use. All right. So I'm going to run through and show you that script before we actually apply it. Um, now the good thing is that the script that we're going to use. So I was just looking if I had Visual Studio open. Oh, I have got Visual Studio. The script that we're going to use. There we go. Uh, should be very familiar to you because it's the same script, um, uh, or ninety percent of it anyway, uh, as the script that we use for our first-person controller. Because there's elements in there that um, I shared with you that have been commented out or we haven't used yet, uh, which we're going to use for this. All right, uh, and a lot of the movement and the rotation and those elements are exactly the same, and we're not going to change anything. So I'm just going to run through the bits that I have changed on this so that we're not kind of going over old ground. Um, but you can pause this and slow it down and look at the rest of it just to make sure that you've got everything uh, as you need. It. So I'll scroll up and down this a few times so you'll be able to kind of see where we're, where we're going with it. Um, I've just got mine labelled slightly differently. So you can see that the mine is move script third and that's what it's called over here as well. Um, just because I'm using a build where I've got the first person controller in there already as well so I wanted to make sure I had something different. Okay, But I promise you that most of this is exactly the same there's just a few bits that we add uh, as we go through all right so i'll whisk through those bits and then i'll pause on the bits that we are changing right so public vote for movement speed run speed and rotation speed all as is uh, all the same so we've got those uh, options there that we can change uh, in our inspector later on uh, when we want to and um, play around with our character for me, line 12 and 13, uh, well, line 12 is a comment, just so I know what it is. Um, but this is where we're calling the animator that we're going to use. So private animator and then player underscore anim with a capital A on anim. All right? Please make sure you get that bit that's selected correct, okay? Uh, because we're going to reference this later uh, in some of the lines of script uh, that we've got down the bottom. So we need to make sure that that's the same. Are we on the floor? It's the same as before. Mouse look, you might have in there um, uh, from before, but we don't need to worry too much about that one. We'll come back to mouse look in a little bit. And then this next section here on line 24, the void awake is a new as well. So we need to make sure that that's in there. So void awake, uh, open brackets, and then player underscore anim. Again, just make sure that that's matching what we did before. Let's scroll up. There we go. So those are the same because they're linking together there equals get component animator open brackets close brackets semicolon all right so we're adding this line in here on my line 13 might be slightly different for you but that's where mine is and then this function in here our void awake that we're calling into play into place there Lots of the rest of this will be similar to the first person controller script that you've already got and we've already looked at uh, throughout the year so far. Okay, including void start, which is just calling the rigid body, um, the on collision enter, which is where we're kind of checking whether we're on the ground or not for our jump animation uh, and our jump commands. And then we've got our void update where we've got run movement, the jump command itself. Now, what you might find if you've duplicated your own script uh, rather than use the one that I emailed, there's a version of this script on your emails from last Thursday, um, you might find that you've got the mouse look option open still. 
Okay, so you can comment that out because we don't need the mouse loop for a third person controller. Um, so just forward slash asterisk at the start and then asterisk forward slash uh, at the end of that little block um, just so that you comment the whole thing out. You can delete it out if you want to, but I tend to comment it out rather than delete it just in case I want to kind of play around with it later or have a little look. In the same vein or similar, uh, you might find that these animations here that are live for me on this script are commented out for you if you've duplicated one already. So you just need to remove that asterisk and um, forward slash uh, at the start and the end of this block. Okay, but this is the set of if statements that are con going to control our animations. So I'm going to run through a couple of them. So you can see here if the input on the horizontal axis is not zero. So the exclamation mark means not, so if it's not equal to zero, so if there's some value going into it, so if we're moving on the horizontal or we're moving on the vertical because this is exactly the same, um, then we want to talk to the player, uh, Anim, which is our animator controller, which we're going to look at in a minute. We want to find this Boolean of movement, which is referenced here, and we want to activate that effectively. We want to make that true, effectively saying that if you're moving, play this animation, else don't. Okay, and set that to false. Okay, so if you're moving, play that animation, otherwise, don't play that animation. And then we've got similar ones here for some of the other elements. So we've got run here. So if our movement speed, different question this time because we want it to be slightly different from the horizontal and the vertical um, uh, if statement. This time, if the movement speed is uh, equal to 10, which is the movement speed we set earlier, um, then this time set the animation of running, otherwise, set running to false. And then jump is slightly different. Um, so this time it's not the horizontal or the vertical, and it's not the value. It's whether or not um, the key, uh, the space, uh, space bar on the keyboard has been pressed, um, because that's the command that we've got for jump. Uh, this time we're looking at that animation. We're looking at triggering rather than a boolean this time for the jump animation, um, mainly because we're playing that animation once. So we set it as a trigger rather than a boolean, um, so that we can just play that through the once um, as we go through. All right, and then there's a couple in there for an attack, uh, whether it's a melee or whether it's a shoot, which we're not going to look at this time around. But we'll just leave them in there, uh, ready to use. They're set on G and H, um, just as a little play around. All right. So just very quickly, let's run through everything on the script that's different again. So we mean to make sure that um, we call the animator here, and that that's set on line 13, private animator player underscore anim, semicolon, and then void awake is added, player underscore anim equals get component, less than animator, or greater than, open brackets, close brackets, semicolon. And then we just need to ensure that the mouse look is commented out or deleted out, and that the animations that you should already see in that script are live and they're not commented out so that we can see them uh, in their normal colors. They're not green um, like the mouse look is on my example here. OK. What you should be able to do is then save all of that. Just make sure I didn't make any changes. No, I didn't. And then go back into Unity. Just let it catch itself up on your one. Uh, I didn't change anything on mine, so mine should be fine. And then add component and start looking for your script. So mine's this one, move script third. And then what you should be able to see, uh, all being well, just make sure I've done everything right. If I hit play on my example, then you should see that although I haven't got any, any animations, that my script is working. We're moving. But all looks a bit weird because I've got no animation. I'm stuck in the T-pose. We are moving around the little plane that I've got sorted. Um, you might want to, at this point, just select your plane and tag it as ground, oh, classic mistake, I've not come out of play. So come out of play, select your plane, and just tag it as ground. Um, if you're in a new build and you haven't got the tag ground, just go to add tag uh, and create one called ground. Remember just capital G for ground. Um, and then go back and tag your plane. And then we should have everything running in terms of the script moving and we should have a little bouncing our jump as well. Okay, but we've got no animations playing at the moment, but we know that the move script is working. So similar to our first person controller, we are now moving around. So that's great. We've got the first part working. So let's come out of play so that we don't make any 
silly mistakes by doing stuff in play when it won't save. So now what we need to do is connect the dots. So we need to uh, match up our animations with our script so that when the script is calling those animations, which it's doing all the time, but as you can see I've got this little kind of yellow arrow down here that there's no animator controller in my animator, which is this component here. So it can't play those animations. It will still run and it will still work as you saw, but it's just stuck in the t -pose. So we need to try and make those links and we do that by creating an animator controller. So in the same folder so that we keep it all together, let's right click and we're going to go to create and we're going to go to animator controller. All right, there's a few options for animations, override controller, animation, animator controller. This is the one that we want. So click on there. I'm just going to call this third person so that I know what it is. And then double click and open up. And it will look a little bit similar to this. I'm just going to change my view a little bit so that we've got a bit more room when we look at this. Oh, missed. I know it may not let me do it because we're recording. We'll, we'll have plenty of room. All right, and what we're going to basically do here is we're going to create a little flow chart that's going to link together all of our animations um, as we as we run through them in the game and when we play them with our script. Um, we will do this by setting um, two main elements, if you like, within the animator controller. Uh, we're going to create states, which will be where our actual animations will sit. So each animation that we've downloaded already and we've kind of prepped down here with our idle and our jump will have a state where they are controlled. And then we will transition between those states. All right. So we've got states and we've got transitions within our animator controller, which is going to be our main focus. Now, the first one we're going to do is we're going to right click in here and you can see we've got create state and empty. And you can see that we go from entry straight to this orange new state. Now I'm going to label this one up and call it idle. And you'll see that we've got under motion here, we've got space here for an animation to go in. It's got the same icon. It's got this triangle icon that matches our triangle icons of our animations down here. All right. And we're going to populate this with idle. Now we had this question in class when we were working on this, why we hadn't kind of labelled anything for idle in the script when we were looking um, in Visual Studio and putting the script together. And the main reason is because the animator controller will run the idle animation and, and do all of that work. Um, so we've got this entry element here. So when, effectively when we hit play, because this animator controller will kind of uh, activate instantly. So on entry into our scene, if you like, um, we're going to go straight to the idle animation. Um, because we don't want to be stuck in the T-pose, we don't want to see that movement, we want that to happen instantaneously so that we can't notice it um, as we're playing the game. So that's where we set the idle animation and we can check that kind of straight away. So leaving that as is, let's just go back to our kind of model there. You'll see that we've got our avatar, which is effectively our model um, that the animator is going to link to when it does these animations. And then we've got our controller, which is what we're wait making at the moment. So we can populate this with our controller. So let's drag and drop third person controller in. There we go. Let's go back to our scene. And now when we hit play, what we should see, there we go, is instantly our model is in the idle animation. And we've got not much movement. I think I used an old one that didn't have that kind of hand movement. We just about see some movement in there. But you can see it's not in T-pose, so the animation is working. Now, when I kind of run this and move around, you'll see that in the same way, um, she's moving and she can jump as well and all of that. Um, but this time, instead of being stuck in the T-pose, I'm stuck in the idle pose. And if I show you what's happening on the animator controller, you can see that this blue line is the length of that idle animation. So we'll play that constantly. We'll get to the end and then we'll loop back because we looped it earlier. If you remember when we selected... Um, our idle animation, we selected it to loop. So this will constantly play that idle animation until Unity tells it to do something else, which is what we're going to do next. We're going to kind of put those transitions in place for walking and jumping and so on and so forth. All right, so let's come out of play before I forget. Let's go back to our animator. Let's just tweak. And now we need to do a fair bit of setup. 
um, just to get this working. So apologies if my screen's a little bit small, but I'll explain kind of what we're doing as we go. All right, so we've got our idle state. So we know that we need um, states for our other animations. So let's do walking next. So we'll just right click up here, create state, and empty. You'll see it's a slightly different color because um, it's the gray color rather than the orange because it's not going straight from entry. Um, this is one that we'll link to in a little while. So we'll just have a sample and call it walk. And we're going to add another one in for running. Move that one up just up there. And then a final one for jump. Oh, make sure it's tapped on it. Jump. Okay, so those are all of our states that we're going to use. So those are the states that we are then going to populate with our animations. So like we did before, let's get our animations in so we get the right ones in the right place. So that's our walk animation. So that's fine. My animation walking, nice and easy. Drag and drop that in. You can click the button up here if you want to. I'm doing a drag and drop mine because I've got other animations and it will just make it confusing if I click that button. Uh, there's my running one. Running. And then lastly, if I just select on jump, you remember that jump hasn't got a loop on there because we're only going to play that once. So I'm just going to kind of highlight that. So I'll show you running. There's running. It's got the loop, whereas jumping hasn't. All right, so that's it. Our jumping state, and then populate that with our jumping animation. There we go. So our states are ready to go. So now we need to start thinking about our transitions. We've got a number of transitions that we're going to need to kind of think through. So starting from idle, the most basic one we want to go from idle to walk. So we can right click, make transition, and you'll see that you'll get a little line and we can just drag up and then click on walk and we've got that first transition in. We've got some information over here that we're going to come back to when we select on our transition. So you can see that we've got some information here that we're just going to link together a little bit later on. We've got these conditions that we need to set up. So this won't work just yet. We know we're going to go from idle to a walk. Now, if we let go of WASD or whatever we're using to walk, um, then we want our animation to go straight back to idle. So we need to make sure that we right click from walk, make transition, and go back to idle. So now we've got that movement from idle to walk and then from walk to idle. Now, you might be able to see what's coming, but we need to make sure that we link all of these together. So for instance, you might go straight from idle to a running animation. Um, you might miss out walk altogether. So we need to make sure that we go from idle, right click, make transition, and run. And then equally, you might just let go of everything. You might not go back to a walk uh, from running. You might just go back straight back to idle. So right click on running, make transition, and back to idle. And you can see that we've got the arrowheads kind of pointing in the direction that we're going. So it's easy, easily confused, uh, confused in here if you're kind of not keeping an eye on things. That's why you're able to move these states around. You can zoom in and out and you can see lots of space there for animations. Um, right, so we've got from idle to walk, from walk back to idle. Same for running, from idle to running, from running back to idle. You might go from walking to running and miss out kind of idle all together between two. So we need to make sure that we can go from walking to running and then from running back to walk. Now from all of these, you could jump. So again, this is all good practice. Uh, you can make a transition to jump and then we would go straight back to idle. Likewise from walk to jump, and back again, and finally from running to jump, and back again. Okay, so that is the flow of our animation set up. 
ready to go. Um, obviously you can add more in and if you saw earlier in the script that I had uh, kind of melee attacks and shoot attacks that might have their own little animations uh, you saw from Mixamo that there was a whole little dance ones so you could have a, like an emote um, set up or something along those lines and you'd have to factor those in and this animation controller as well so you'd have to think carefully about where they're going to go and where they're going to drop in we're not going to worry about that now um, we're just going to get these kind of on the go and hopefully kind of working uh, as we go through. Now we had a number of um, uh, elements if you remember from the script let's put it up there's my script there we go all right so if you remember from the script there we go. when we were looking at the animations we've got couple of conditions we've got this boolean that we're calling here the set bool for movement we've got one for running as well and then we've got this trigger for jump um, and I annoyingly have called it jump one so we just need to make sure that um, I mean you could change that to uh, just jump in there uh, in fact I think I might do that just save my script I don't know why I call it jump one it must be a hangover from something I was playing around with before so we need a couple of um, conditions uh, within our animation controller um, of movement running and jump I think that's all we need we're not going to worry about melee shoot at the moment so that should be all we need all right but so we need to look at some booleans and we need to look at that trigger and then we need to put them in the right place for our transitions as we go forward so let's have a little look over here in our animator controller we've got these parameters so if we select that we can see at the moment our list is empty and if we click on the plus uh, and we go down to bool first and I'm going to call this one movement now you need to make sure that what you put in here is exactly the same as what's in the script um, in a very similar way to when you use animations in stencil um, so when you were calling those animations in stencil you'll remember that you needed to make sure that they were labeled in the animation section uh, of your character and your actors um, whatever you then called uh, in the in the script in the block script needed to be exactly the same this is no different so we need to make sure they're exactly the same so running with a capital m for our first boolean um, our second one sorry movement for our first one our second one is running apologies and then the third one is a trigger remember that jump is slightly different it's not that continuous movement it's that one-off uh, trigger that we're going to go through All right, so let's bring this back over here. So let's get some basic ones set up first. So I'm going to select on my transition from idle to walk. So you need to select on the line. You'll see it selected where it goes blue, and you get this bit more information in here. So we've got these conditions. So I can click a condition here plus. And it will select the selected movement because it's the first one in my in my list. But actually, that's the first one that we want. So we want, if we're kind of going from idle to walk, we want movement to become true. We want that condition to be true. Traversely, when we're coming back from walk to idle, we want the condition of movement to be false. Now this is the bit I always forget, whether or not we need an exit time. Now an exit time is whether or not you need kind of any exit time between the two animations, um, or if you need it to be instantaneous. And I will invariably get this wrong, so um, uh, I haven't written this down in my notes, which is remiss of me, but we'll work it out as we go. So I wonder, let's see if we can just test walk. I don't know if this will play the whole way through, but um, why not? Let's have a go. So if we hit play, we've got our idle animation working, that's fine. And then if we hit walk, no. Oh, okay, so it's taking a little bit of time to get going. I think maybe that needs to have an extra time taken off. Let's have it play around with this. Let's come out of play, otherwise it will tell me off. Um, so it's we're almost there. Oh, I don't think it needs an exit time. Let's take those off. This is where I should have checked my notes. There we go. 
OK, we've got a bit of an issue with the run um, animation. That's probably because I haven't fin finished it yet. And we're getting to a certain speed. But you can see that we're starting to get there. We're starting to get a little bit of kind of uh, detail in our animations. They're working a little bit nicer than before. I don't know why it kind of keeps skipping into a run, but we'll work that as we go. Right, let's go back to our animator. So let's just go over what I did there. So on my transition from idle to walk, we've added the condition of movement into true. All right, so when we go from idle to walk, we want that animation to become true and we want that to work. And when we go from walk to idle, we want that animation to be false. We want that to stop happening. OK, so we need to do the same for running and going from idle to running. So let's have a look at that. So transition of this time. Remember what I said, that it only chooses movement because it's the first in the list. So we just want to change that this time to running. So we're going from idle to running. We want that to be true. And then coming back, we want running to be false. Let's take the exit times off for now. OK, let's see what that does. Now, you'll have to remember that this the running animation is in place just from running. We haven't put it from walking to running. So I'm just going to kind of run straight away. I've got a bit of a glitch in my animation, so it's not quite where it needs to be. What I might need to do is just pause the. Uh, oh, just done it weird there. Let's play and pause. Just make sure I wasn't pause. So uh, I might need to just pause this and check back and find my notes. So I'll finish this off um, as we go. But we'll, we'll keep going for a minute and we'll see. Um, right, let's see if we can. So going from running to then walking, making sure that we're going back. So remember, we're selecting on the conditions, not the states this time. Um, uh, the transition, sorry, to set the conditions, not the um, not the states themselves. So that's a false. Our free movement ones, all the others are our jump ones, which we'll come back to in a bit. Let's see what is. Oh, I didn't take the exit times off. Let's just take those exit times off. Let's see what we've got now. So there's our idle, and that's that working. We're just walking. No, oh, we've got something weird happening with the jump. Okay. Now that is weird. I'm not entirely sure why it's jumping. I'm thinking maybe I've got one of my. Oh, I don't know why it's going to uh, jump. That's a bit odd. I did make it a trigger, didn't I? OK, I'm going to pause this here and I'm going to come back. Uh, I'm going to check my notes uh, and work out why we're running and then we'll be able to splice it all together. So bear with me uh, and I will uh, come back and we'll finish our uh, animation controller. But what you can see is that we're starting to get there. Um, we've just got a few tweaks that we need to do um, uh, as we go through. Just trying to think what I've missed. I think it's going to be something really obvious which is going to be annoying but we've got the basic setup we just need to come back and make sure that we've got these transitions in the right way we're almost there um, and then we can just have a little look at what uh, it means with, in terms of exit times and changing those settings um, but I'm just going to pause here and then we'll come back and check in a second All right, by the magic of uh, recording, uh, hopefully you wouldn't have noticed anything um, that um, I've been gone. But I've gone and I've checked my animation controller, um, uh, my animated controller, I should say, sorry, um, and I've worked out what I was doing wrong. It's, you won't believe me, but I was 
pretty much there um, uh, uh, and it was just where I hadn't put in um, the right things with the, the jump command and just a few tweaks on the exit times uh, which I'll go over now. Right, so let's start from the beginning. So from idle to walk, we've got our click on the right screen. There we go. Um, we've got our process where we're going from idle to walk, and we've got our movement is true. Okay, we saw that was working before, and then from walk back to idle, um, we've got our movement is false. And on both of those, we want no exit time. Okay, we want no exit time uh, in terms of our um, animation. So it doesn't complete the animation or anything like that. Uh, if we change kind of what we're doing, we want it to happen instantaneous. Um, uh, similar with kind of running, we go from running from idle to running is true, uh, and then equally we're coming back from running to idle uh, and running is false. Okay, uh, from walk to running, we go running is true. And then from back, we were running is false. Okay, so when we're going to a state, we set the uh, condition uh, for our boolean to be true, uh, and when we're coming back, we set it to be false. Okay, uh, very similar to when you write get those if statements. If you've got that true or false, so we want to go from one state to another, we want that condition to be true. All right. Um, when we go from jumps, it's slightly different because it's a trigger, it's a kind of uh, moment that's happening. Uh, so when we go from, because it's nice and clear and it's along the top, so when we go from running to jump, you can see that uh, we set our condition for jump to happen. Okay, There's no true or false, it just happens uh, in, in with the jumps. Okay, uh, And there's no exit time on the animation on this instance. When we go back from jump to running, you'll see that there's no condition in place. It doesn't need to be because we're going back. Um, and it has an exit time. It completes the animation um, uh, as we go through that's kind of set up with it, that transition. Uh, and likewise from the others, from walk to jump, that's that transition. We've got jump set. And then no conditions on the way back. And then lastly, from idle to jump, there's our jump condition set. And then on the way back, no conditions. Just making sure that when we come back from jump, that that exit time is set. And now what you should see is that when I hit play up here, we'll jump into our animation. So our idle is running. So now when I press kind of W for me to move forward, we can see that our walk animation is working. And that's all nice and smooth uh, and working nicely. If I, I'm just going to turn around a bit. If I start to run. And that kicks in the run animation. And then lastly, if I jump, it plays that jump animation. And we can walk and hit jump. And we can also move my first distance there. And we can also run and hit jump and it will kind of work through. So that's our animator controller now talking to the script that is on our model and everything is in place and controlling. So there you have it. You've got your third person controller with animations um, with just a few tweaks on the scripts that you've already been using um, and with a basic setup as you go through. Now, like I said before, when you go back to that animator controller, you can add in uh, different elements uh, as you go through. If I am just see if I can uh, get this side by side of the plane. Give me one second, I'll try and get in there. There we go. So now what you can see, hopefully, we can turn the game. Can you see the blue lines? So I'm walking uh, on there, and you can see that now that that animation is there is, is now kind of live with the blue line that's flashing over here. Make sure I don't fall off the side. All right. Hold down shift for my running animation, and there's me running. And then if we jump, it just plays that animation. And you can see it going back to idle now. So you can see all of our links are in place uh, and running nicely um, uh, as we go through. Let's try and get back up there, go back to the game. We'll just come out of pause. All right. So 
like I say, those links all put together, so you've got the animations being called at the right time, um, being controlled by the animator controller, uh, and then being called at the right time by the script. So when we move in the right direction, uh, the animation is being called at the right time. Um, I've just noticed one last thing that I'm just going to do, um, just to um, kind of dot the I's and cross the T's. Um, always good to stick with the details. Um, so let me just go back to... Uh, where are we? There we go. Let's go back to Mixer. Um, now, one thing I did mention uh, that when I did this, I pulled it across and I didn't actually pull across the um, uh, character. So I'm just going to clear off the animations on there. So that I've just got my character in its T pose. I'm going to go back to download. Um, now, there is probably a, another way of doing this, but I know for sure that this way works. So if you want the textures and the materials for your character, um, then a good way of doing it is to download the uh, DAE file, which is the bottom one. Now, the reasons I've asked you to pull the FBX for Unity ones is because I know the FBX for Unity's work with the animations, and that was the focus for this video. Um, there are probably different ways of getting the uh, materials out. There's probably different ways of getting the DAE file to work with uh, all of the animations, but I just went with what I knew at this stage. So if we just select the um, DAE file, um, download, um, give that a second because I haven't done this one uh, in advance, so just let that download. It shouldn't take too long. Um, uh, then what this will do is it packages it in a slightly different way. Um, you can see it's just kind of downloading it into a zip file into there. Let's show that in the folder and unzip it. Oh, sorry, I just need to go across to my other screen. There we go. Um, so there's the DAE file, uh, and then in there, we've got all of our textures. Now, what we can do is... Let's just keep that folder kind of around and about. Let's minimize that. Let's get our Unity file back up. And then in here, I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it Materials. Double click and open that. Uh, find our textures that we've got in there. It's textures, really, not materials. I should have called it textures. My apologies it will create materials when we drag and drop. So literally just drag and drop that in there. And then normally, okay, it's not done it this time. I was about to say, normally what it would do is it would find that um, straight away. Um, but it might be that I just need to apply this. Now, typically, when I did this before, it worked perfectly. And this time it hasn't. I wonder if I put the textures in that root folder. Well, this should have been a very quick bit to finish up the video. Let's just put them in that root folder. There we go. All right, OK. Um, it's because I put them in a the folder. All right, so I've just kind of added those in. Um, I can probably now it's applied. I can probably put those into a folder and it will remember where they are. Uh, but you can see that now my model is textured uh, and it's got all the materials and bits and pieces uh, that have come across. Um, really. Oh, I've got a little. I'll just show you this because it's on my other screen. I've got a little kind of pop up that's come through with the materials, uh, which is probably why it didn't work before. Just saying, do you want to kind of sort out the normal um, texture that's come across? You can just fix now and it will sort it. Um, Probably if I'd noticed that before, it would have worked the first time. But there we go. All right. We live in that. And now you can see that when we hit play, we've got our model uh, in all its glory, in kind of animations in place, textures in place. And we now have our third person um, character with animations for um, at least four different um, states as we go through. It's now over to you to play with uh, the different ones that you want to put together and see what you can come up with. All right. So... Hopefully, you've got all you need now to go away and have a little uh, kind of play around with that. Um, I know it's a long video to go through, but you'll be able to kind of access this and go back and forth, pause it, stop it, have a look at, look, look at the bits that you've got, see what you've missed. Um, you can see from my example that everything is in place and it's all working. So just make sure that you're getting things accurate with the script in particular, that you're making sure that you're getting the transitions in the right order when you set them up initially, but then also those conditions on the transitions for the Boolean and the trigger. Um, there's a lot that can be missed, but if you go through 
step by step um, get just a basic one working in a scene like I've got uh, and then you can play around and add it into your um, uh, into your build and your ideas as you go forward all right right I'll see you in class